how to make endless runner in Unity. In the previous video, I have shown the easiest way to set up the project for an endless runner game. This project works fine, but when I try to jump over this platform, it reverts the player back to the start position. I don't want that. I want to make the game more interesting with randomized platforms. This tutorial will involve programming in terms of making a platform generator that will make the scene look more interesting by generating random platforms. So, let's begin. First of all, you should delete those platforms, or hide them, because you don't need it. And locate the respawn object. As you can see, it uses the tag platform. Move it here and remove that tag, because it will move your player to the start position. Now add a C-sharp script. That will be the platform generator. But before adding the script, you need to think about what exactly do you need to make the project spawn platforms. First of all, create a prefabs folder. It will contain all the player and platform prefabs. Make the platform prefab by adding an empty game object that will be the parent of the platform, because that will enable you to manipulate the platforms more easily. Or you can put the platform inside, like this. But I would recommend you the first option. That can be done by selecting two platforms and clicking create empty parent. So, let's make the prefabs. It's easy. You just need to click and drag the platform, like I did in this way. Now you can open the prefab and manipulate it. It will also update in the Unity scene. Great! But we want to make this look like an endless platform generation. How to do that? Basically, you need to add the transparent object, which will be the trigger for adding new platforms. Copy the platform generator from the scene and add it into the prefab. First make a platform generator point. Create an empty object, like this. Then you can copy and paste it into the prefab. Now we can go to the script. Public Game Object the game object should be the platform. And the platform object is actually an array, not only one platform. So name it game object platforms. After adding the platforms, you need a transform, which is the object that I defined before going to the script. It's the platform generation point. And you should name it platform generator. You need to add random range, that will randomly choose the platform. So this will be the minimum random number and the maximum random number. Let's see how to implement the platforms, platform generation point and the random platform numbers. You should add on trigger enter, simply because when the player touches this object it will need to generate the platforms. So, to generate the platforms, you need to generate them as separate game object. Game object will be called platform. And for generating a random object, you need to use instantiate. According to Unity documentation, instantiate requires a game object, transform position, transform rotation and identity. Because I have an array of platforms, I will use the random range. It won't work without it. The random range should have the minimum and maximum random platform. It should also have the transform of the platform generation point and the quaternion. Oh, this line of code is too long. But I hope you can see what does it show. When I was testing this game, every new platform had the word clone. This is why I'm adding the platform name. Be careful. 
don't put two equal signs because that's not a statement. Now you should save the script and go back to unit. Pay attention that you need to set the tag to player. Now you should test it to see how it looks like. I will speed up the game because it feels very slow. When I get to the platform generator, it looks like the platforms are generated much lower than the platform that you are standing on right now. I will first set the tag to untagged, because looks like it was making some problem with the playback. Now I should configure the platform generator point, to try experimenting and see what will work. I will try with different Y values. Now I set the Y value to negative 4. I'm happy, it works fine. Now copy and paste the platform generator and rename it to platform destroyer. This object will destroy the platform after you cross over it. But it will actually destroy the previous platform, so that's why I positioned it after the platform. It should have its own script, that will be called Platform Destroyer. This script is very easy. Like I explained in the previous tutorials, use void on trigger enter. But before that, add a game object that will be for the platform, because that's the game object that has to be deleted every time. If that game object detects the player, the platform will be deleted. So save the script and test it. Don't forget to add the destroy object on all prefabs. Click and drag the platform and copy the object to other prefabs. After copying the object, you can manipulate the platforms to make them different just because your game will always feel the same. You can change the platforms to make the scene more interesting. So let's try the final game after doing some modifications. Depending on your project, the spawn point's Y position will be different. In my case it's negative 047. I have tried it and now I can say that every platform generates more smoothly. And it works fine. And make sure to set that Y position of the platform generation to be the same in all platforms, especially if they are the same height. Now after you copied that number in all platforms, you can change them, modify the size and do it exactly like I did. But you can make it different, depending on what do you like. I will post the updated scripts so you can access them if you are interested. I am also developing a side project that has all the scripts that I am using right now. I will make more tutorials for game development and other related videos in the future. Have a good day, bye!